This is a 2015 Ford Escape two-wheel drive. It needs brakes put all around it. The rear rotor is rusting out. I guess I'll start with the rear brakes. Install a jack. Gotten us off to the left side of the spring and lower control arm. I'll be setting a jack stand on this blunt area underneath the spindle on both sides. Looks pretty good. Both of them on the ends. Not, not always the end. It's next to the cool spring on the lower control arm. We'll go ahead and take the wheels off. The lug nuts are 19 millimeters. Which you may have to beat all the way on the cheap way it's put together the pressed piece of uh, chrome over a rusty center so it swells it out so you have to knock a socket on you want to keep that up keep the socket on there as far as possible for as long as possible so you don't end up stripping out the ends of it but it really needs new lug nuts as a solution to fix the problem, I guess. And once they're loosened up, we're going to be prepared to get the socket back off of them. That's nice. So on and so forth. That's extra special. See the pad's only using this much to stop with. And anytime it tries to touch this part of the rotor, it just disappears. Because the rotor's falling apart. So not that the pads are super wide, but they should probably go up here another quarter of an inch so you're losing that much stopping ability. This is just the outside. The inside may or may not be as bad. But, it's getting new rotors. I believe these, they'll have a cap plug on the two caliper pins. And a 7mm Allen head in them. And I'll have to pop this brake spring off. Noise suppressor. But, uh, and these, these plugs are just on the tip. And this is a rubber boot. Let's get them. Pop them out. And hang on to them. Keeps the corrosion out of there. It's in there. And while messing around with the small stuff, go ahead and spray some Joy Lube on the center hub of this rotor. And at the upper lug nut studs. Or all of them, it doesn't matter. Just to get that working on coming off there if, if your rotor looks as bad as this one.
and you can the vibration helps work that stuff in there it may be a bear it may not you kind of see the penetrating oil fizzing when you hit it face if you're planning on reusing this rotor the rim sits along this perimeter here you go for the sides but we'll see I'm gonna go ahead and pop this noise suppressing spring off it'll, it'll cause a problem I'm trying to get the caliper off what's on there And it just, it'll should just kind of fall out the other side after you get the load taken off of it. Just like that. I've got a seven millimeter hex head. And let's go ahead and break this one loose and pull back on it and break this one loose and pull just pull back on the pin a little bit it's really not much to taking these loose and once you see it clear it just kind of tilt the ratchet at an angle and walk it backwards Gonna be a little, a little sticky. Got a bite on the rusty rotor and the leg got onto it. It's kind of fried up equal. These have the calipers with the pistons, you gotta spin, spin them and compress them at the same time to retract them because the way the emergency brakes designed to screw the pin, pistons out into the pads to hold it in place and one of these pads will have a like a uh, saw but spring loaded top on it or to be loaded like here man I think it's another noise suppressor for the inside pad now I'll go ahead and pry it on off of there it's, it's making some progress I come off here I kind of dislodged this emergency brake grommet and just flip the caliper upside down I don't want to stress it out too much the caliper pistons really out there But they make a special tool with a paddle that sits against these ears and then a screw in the center that compresses this and helps rotate this. And I'll just use a, since it's first time, I'll just use a pair of slip lock pliers on the base of it and push down on it and rotate it. I'll get to that later. Now I want to go ahead and take the this caliper hanger off two bolts in the back 13 millimeters 
so I'm clean these pads, the tracks they run in, and clean them up. The inside's kind of still free, but this outer was galled in place. Really not too much to it. Uh, it feels like they probably got some Loctite or something on them. Mm. Why was they was chewy feeling? Both bolts are the same. And, yep, that's a jewel. But it looks pretty good shape. One of these. Scrape these out and wire brush these tracks out and put some seal glide. It's no never seize or nothing. Use uh, brake grease. It was designed for for slide on. And while I'm cleaning that caliper hanger up, I'm go ahead and hit this again. Just to keep it freshened up. There, it's coming loose. like downtown. I want to break clean that off and wire brush it to get scale off from behind the rotor. I want to sit flat on this or the wheel wobble. That's no fun. It looks like this could use a set of shocks on it. And look at any other bushings. For any cracks or problems while you're in here, stabilizer link. Condition of the brake hose. Of course, this is in that old, so it shouldn't be too hammered out. But you never know what you'll find in here. And be advised that the dust that comes off of all of this is fairly hazardous to your health. So wear a mask. I'm going to scrape all the rust off of that and kind of dig out those trenches a little bit with a file just to square them up, clean it up, get the rust out of it. Now I've got it cleaned up. A sawzall blade is great for getting in in tight places, and since it cuts metal, scrape the rust off pretty effectively, pretty quick. And so on. You just want to get the rough stuff all, not really take any of the metal wall. And once that looks pretty good, make sure that uh, new pads slide through without incident. No problems. 
just kind of drop it in there. It only go back as far as that. But there's no issues, so. And I've used some brake cleaner to try to penetrate the wheel off of that and go over it with a wire brush and not, not get the, brass, the brush saturated with the wheel. I think most of this is just on the perimeter. Not, not real bad yet. Raise that border here so between the center and there is what the rotor is going to square up on. This depression, as long as there's nothing higher than these, it won't matter. And I might take some 80 grit sandpaper and go run, scrape the rest off this center part, put a little brake grease thin coat on it. The grease I also acts as a rust inhibitor for a while. The drain pan catching all the overspray off of the cleaning this. Um, put the thin layer of grease on the center part. Nothing on the lug nut studs or nothing on the flange. And I'm using three year rotors, which have a paint coating on them. And they don't need wiped off or anything before use. Now, rotors that don't have this paint coating need sprayed with brake cleaner on the disc part and wiped down some kind of wax coating to keep them from rusting. That should be cleaned off. But uh, really, the three year rotors, you're lucky to get two years out of them. Um, two year rotor, you're lucky to get a year out of it, so on. So, we want the top of the line. I'm going to stick it on there. And It'll sit on there just fine. Um, sometimes, especially for the rusty flange or something, I'll put a spacer on it and one of the lug nuts to hold it down. Hold it flat against the flange. got the caliper hanger prepped with grease on both ends keeping keeping that thin down between where the rotor is to lay on either side of the rotor and you really really don't want the grease on the rotor at all you have to spray it off brake cleaner if you get grease on it but I'm gonna go ahead and mount it back on these caliper hanger bolts anchor plate whatever you want to call it tighten down to 48 foot pounds both of them and and you got this inside pad with the cross spring on it Let's drop it in and drop, drop the other one in home in time for cornflakes. Now I'm going to work on this caliper. It's a jewel. Uh, you can also rent like a master set like this from a local parts store for the caliper. And use it to compress the so uh, kind of turns as it's pressing it threads through and presses it down. And this does multiple manufacturers vehicles. And if you don't have the tool, I put a six inch C clamp and just just put apply some light force to it. They center the screw part of the C clamps in the center of the caliber piston. You can't just mash it back in there, you'll buff the guts out of it. So you can get on a pair of 
channel locks and just kind of push the rubber boot down a little bit and you're going to with caliper looking at you be sure not to stress the flexible rubber brake hose out back there but just kind of turn the C clamp and the uh, channel locks about half a turn each and it'll go back in there just fine and it actually threads down a, a big screw so inside the caliper piston and you can't force it without threading it so that's the way it goes Say you don't need much on the C clamp, just has to kind of help it back so it'll grab the threads. It won't necessarily grab them unless it's pushed a lot of the time. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Retracted. There's no pin sticking up on the brake pads, so it'll set in this smooth area between these pins. And you can screw it down in there till it fits it or it stops one or the other. Looks like got another. Well, it's about there. and then go and load it and give it another turn and when you get it be sure your pins are pushed back flush with the rubber sticking that they're sticking through Make sure it's back in its holder. Just like downtown. These caliper pins will tighten down to 22 foot pounds with a 7 millimeter hex head. And you just kind of push the caliper down till the threads line up with the hole and start cranking on it. Now it's going to be a little loaded because of this spring on the back of the inside pad. But just kind of hold the caliper down until it starts and run both pins down. And then tighten them down their final torque at 22 foot pounds. And then stick the cap plugs back in these rubber sleeves one on top one on the bottom and once the caliper pins are tight put the noise suppressor spring back on that's not a big deal just hooks underneath each one of these ledges and then these holes and just one side's not too bad just Make sure they're pushed back in the hole. Then you can walk the other side up into the hole after getting the top one of these. Take a pair of pliers or something. Help it out. Just try not to distort the spring. And once you get it started in the hole, just it back on in there. Sitting flush against the, the back part and underneath each lip. Flush.
Looks good. And put the beauty cover back on and line the notch up in it with the bow stem. Push it over the lug nut stuff. And install the lug nuts. These will tighten down to 100 foot pounds. And do the other side and you're, you're done. Be sure to apply the brake about halfway, three or four or five times till you got a full pedal before trying to move the vehicle or you may end up going, going in a direction you can't stop to get that pedal up. Check and make sure the master cylinder is not spilling fluid all over the underbody from it being overfilled or something. Drain any excess off. And that should do it.